Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about some upcoming potential severe weather, including this evening where we have a moderate risk of severe weather. We need to talk about that, but also some upcoming events as well. There's also some snowfall going on and some snowfall in the future. There's tons and tons to talk about, and we're going to be going over all of it within this video. <music> Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next slight risk of severe weather will be? Do you think it's going to be as that cold front crosses into the eastern United States? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery here. You can see there is some precipitation there. Uh, over the northwest, we have some of this going on with our major snowstorm there over the Rockies there. And then we also have some precipitation there for the Ohio Valley. All right, that's everything that's going on. There's three areas. Let's just zoom into each one. First off, for the west coast here, let's just take a zoomed in look. I mean, kind of see that snowstorm already, so kind of a sneak peek there. All right, now we have this storm moving on shore. This area, I mean, probably for the past five days at least that we've been doing this, has had precipitation moving on shore. So it has been... I mean, obviously, they're known for that anyway, but it has been just relentless, I feel like. I mean, every single day. We do have some snowfall here for the mountainous regions, uh, is also the mountainous regions here of uh, Oregon and California there in the northern regions. I don't know if that's the Sierra Nevadas here, if this is considered to be the Cascades or maybe a different mountain range there. Uh, but that area does see snowfall from time to time as well. Uh, but regardless, we do have some snowfall moving on shore and some moderate rainfall as well. Pretty persistent rainfall. Now let's move on to this snowstorm here in the Rockies and really I mean from almost the Mexico border from time to time all the way to the Canada border we do have precipitation of some sort. So this storm is really elongated through that area and if I'm not mistaken uh, our low pressure system should be somewhere I would say it's somewhere like here right now and what it's kind of going to do is move up like this now as it pertains to our severe weather today by the way that is going to happen to the south of where this low pressure system goes and it is going to be racing this is maybe going to be a three or four hour event i am planning on going live by the way starting at about 7 p.m i have not scheduled that live stream yet but be on the lookout for it we do have a moderate risk of severe weather i learned my lesson for not going live last time as so much severe weather happened and i will not skip out on giving you guys that information that vital information this time around so i did learn my lesson there uh, regardless let's reel it all back in we have that moderate to heavy snowfall ongoing for states like arizona utah wyoming montana colorado new mexico it's all coming down and we'll take a look at what that's going to do soon but a lot of snow has come down that's the that's the big thing you need to know uh, whoa 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 okay let's take a look at this rainfall going on over here a lot of it for the great lakes in the ohio valley here now, this is moving out. Uh, it kind of was over our regions over here earlier, uh, but these areas have cleared out and they're going to warm up, and we'll take a look at what's going to happen with that in a moment as we move on to the models. Uh, but we do have some light to moderate rainfall coming down for Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, maybe a bit of Wisconsin earlier, and it's probably going to move into Pennsylvania, New York as well, maybe West Virginia getting included. But for the most part, this is a light area of showers, uh, and maybe some heavier show showers there in the yellows. But regardless, this is going to move out uh, as quickly as it moved in. Now, here is that severe weather risk. And, I mean, it is not looking good, guys. I think yesterday it was a slight risk, and now it's gone two levels up. It's added an enhanced and a moderate risk for today. So, this is not looking good, guys. First off, we have three areas of general thunderstorm risk. I mean, is it December or is it April right now? I mean, this is crazy. But, yeah, for Northern California... Uh, areas in Oregon and then also areas in southern Florida we have the general thunderstorm risk the Florida one not so crazy but definitely having three of them total and one of them being here is very odd but uh, we definitely have a huge area of thunderstorms expected here over the central United States as this cold front we've been talking about is going to pass through all right let me get this all off screen it looks really messy general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green uh, marginal risk here in the darker green we do expect some severe weather to be possible but it is very, very isolated typically, and sometimes it doesn't even happen in these regions, but you're going to want to pay attention regardless. 
this slight risk here in the yellow. That's where things get a little bit more active. We see the scattered severe weather. Typically, you're going to see some pretty bad thunderstorms regardless here in this slight risk region, this yellow region. We have a very small orange region, which you can hardly see. That's our enhanced risk, and that's where things usually get a little bit widespread. You can expect some pretty nasty thunderstorms to take place, more chance than not, basically. And the moderate risk is where we really want to pay attention because this is the same risk we had just a little bit further south about four or five days ago where we had that massive tornado outbreak, historic for this time of year, and, and quite frankly, I think historic for any time of year tornado outbreak. So... If you have a moderate or a high risk, you want to be on high alert regardless, pretty much. Now, let's take a look at those individual outlooks. We'll start out with wind here. Now, this is the biggest threat, basically, through this event. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there in the brown. We have a 15% chance there within the yellow region. Um, we have a 30% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there in the red and then we have a 45% chance of severe weather there within 25 miles of a given location there within the purple. You also notice there's that hatched black area. That is indicating that there is a 10% or greater probability of wind gusts 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point. So basically, especially damaging wind within there. It doesn't even usually take that much. Usually 50 knots is considered to be severe uh, wind but 65, so 15 knots higher is expected to be really possible within that region. So we're taking a look at some very, very strong winds possibly within this region. Now, for this time of year, it's very typical to have a uh, very uh, small hail risk. Typically, that's a very exclusive thing for the spring and summer months. So we do have a 5% chance of hail. It could happen within 25 miles of a given location, but it's not a, a very high risk at all. So that's not a huge concern today. It might happen, but it's not a huge concern. Now, this is a huge concern, the tornado uh, uh, risk here. And at this point, it doesn't look nearly as bad as a few days ago, which is really, really good news. But this does not mean that it's a low risk by any means. Uh, tornadoes, we use way smaller probabilities because obviously tornadoes are much more rare than a wind gust, for instance. But within 25 miles of a given location, there's a 2% chance of tornadoes there in the green, which, you know... For a tornado, that's a huge deal. So 2% is actually pretty high. 5% chance there within the brown. Again, I, I don't want to roll the dice like that. Like, I always get nervous when there's any chance of tornadoes in my area. Uh, so you're going to want to be aware in any of these regions. And tornadoes can happen outside of this, too. You know, we're only human, and, and the Storm Prediction Center is only human. Things can happen differently. So you're going to want to pay attention regardless if you're having these thunderstorms today. And then we have a 10% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the yellow regions there in northern Iowa and southeastern Minnesota. Again, I will be going live for this severe weather event later today uh, to some extent, so you're going to want to tune into that. I'm going to be trying to give as much live coverage as I can. I'm planning on doing about 7 p.m. to about 11 p.m. or so, or however long it takes these storms to end. So at some point this evening, about 7 p.m., to about 11 p.m. we are going to be live on the channel so keep that in mind now right now we're taking a look at the temperatures here throughout the day today because we're going to talk about the dew points the temperatures all of it and let's take a look at those high temperatures for a lot of the severe weather regions i mean it's going to be lower 60s and upper 50s i mean it's not going to be warm by any means here for this region but there will be just enough instability to make this happen and i think that's the main reason why um our, our main severe weather mode is going to be wind because there's just not enough instability in here uh, to create hail, obviously, and tornadoes can happen in colder temperatures as well. Uh, hail is more of a warm weather, severe weather uh, type, obviously, so that's why we're not dealing with that, in my opinion. Now, dew points, there will be moisture, okay? We have lower 60s, upper 50s for the dew points as well, uh, and obviously very, very dry air behind this cold front, as you can see. Uh, we go from about the single digits and teens uh, after we get through this cold front. So that's that's the difference here. I mean, we're looking at 62 and 13 within uh, just a small distance there within that cold front. So that is why this is such a, a bad event here. Now, as we take a look at the actual precipitation here, uh, just the setup, you can just tell. I mean, right here is our low pressure system about, and it's going to head generally like this. But like I said, it's this region just below, and that's going to be pushing just to the north 
uh, as this passes through these higher dew points, these higher temperatures, it just doesn't look good. And, it, and this does look like some embedded supercells will be possible. And I think that's why we have the 10% chance risk of tornadoes as well throughout this region. And as I move this along, or actually, you know what, let's take a look at the cape real quick first off. Um, oh, it's going to be in here, isn't it? Or I'm looking for it now. Where's this going to be? Am I just missing it? Yes, I am. There we go. There it is. Okay. We do have 1,000 plus amounts here out ahead of that line we were taking a look at. And that's going to be sufficient for these thunderstorms staying uh, intense and actually intensifying further throughout the evening. This, for central time, will be about 6 p.m., maybe 7 p.m. here. And Iowa, we're obviously very concerned about. But also Minnesota, where it hasn't really moved into yet. The interesting thing is Minnesota has practically no CAPE, convective available potential energy or thunderstorm food. Uh, but still, these thunderstorms are going to get enough of that energy before crossing over the border that they will be able to pick up that intensity, which is super interesting uh, to me. Let's just take a look. Let's continue to move this on. I should probably do precipitation type because that's, that's interesting also. Look at how much snow is right there. We have snow. And then, you know, you, you take a 100-mile hike that way, and, and there's supercells. So it's always interesting to me when that type of a setup happens, and I've seen that before. Now, already one hour later, look. Okay, let's take a look at this. Probably about 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. That's central time. Already gone. Look at how fast it moves through. Like I said, about four hours, and a lot of the areas that we're seeing supercells will be seeing below normal, or sorry, below freezing temperatures and possibly snowfall uh, in that major snowstorm. Let's take a look at some of our parameters as well. Uh, first off, we'll take a look at our significant tornado parameter because this does get pretty high. Okay, so this is going to be about 6 p.m. when those supercells, embedded supercells potentially, are just starting out. Uh, and we have about a six through eight amounts, I would say, in this region right ahead of that uh, front we're taking a look at. Yeah, 8.65 is the maximum there. Uh, and look, that's going to be sufficient if these storms can become tornadic to really uh, create maybe some major tornadoes, uh, in my opinion, throughout the evening. Now, that number does go down slightly. We get down to about a seven as we're reaching about maybe 9 p.m., that evening, and they're moving into eastern Iowa and southeastern Minnesota. So that number does continue to drop throughout the evening. Uh, but we're going to be watching for potential tornadoes. I think the, the setup is there for tornadic storms, obviously. And that is why the Storm Prediction Center does give it a 10% chance of tornadoes happening. Uh, I think we're just going to need to watch it. This time of year, the one thing that does make these storms more tornadic than even sometimes the spring storms or the summer storms is in the winter time and this goes for early spring as well times like march and april uh, oftentimes we have tons of shear okay this shear is through the roof in these severe weather regions uh, and that is a main driver in tornadic storms and by the way damaging wind events as well shear could be a driver in those so that's why we tape typically take a look at very strong wind wind events and uh, some bigger tornado events at times throughout the winter months. The setup is usually there. If that moisture and instability can get far enough north to where that shear is, that sets up big, big, big severe weather events during the winter. And we saw that like a week ago, like I said, and we're seeing that potentially again this evening. Anyway, that's it for this video for today's confidence tab. We're, we're at a five out of six. Obviously, we only talked about things today, so we're keeping it very high with the confidence. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, um, do you think we will even see any major snowstorms in the eastern United States this December, or will we have to wait even longer? And James Marr said, I believe the last week of December could be active for the east, but it's not guaranteed to be snow. Uh, and that's very true, you know, like we could still see the storminess that is being pointed out by the models, but the cold could become, you know, more suppressed to the north. It could really not make its way down, and that would just result in some rainstorms and hardly any snow. So there is a lot of question marks moving forward, uh, but obviously things will become more clear as we move along. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lyra LePan, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Capite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaven, 
Bill Dallas, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Cronenthal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. I would also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox also. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.